hello and welcome to the teacher table i am your host activia and today we have on the show jackie welcome to the show jackie hi everyone hi team how are you i'm good how are you i'm good i'm good i'm good so first of all i want you to tell me about yourself <laughs> Who are you? Um, Tell the people who you are. Okay, my name is Jacqueline Banks. Um, I'm born in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I attended a small HBCU, for those who don't know. It's a historically black college university in um, Birmingham, Alabama, or Fafia, Alabama, um, called Miles College. Um, I did my undergrad there, elementary education, and then I came over to UAE in 2013. So I did four years teaching in Alabama and came over to UAE. So I've been here for, this is going to my seventh year. And so I've done public and private. So, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and get into your show, okay. your yes. topic. So uh, what is the, your topic? What do you want to discuss tonight? Okay, so my topic that I want to discuss is realism in education. Realism in education. Yes. <laughs> so basically, I put a post not too long ago on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, about just me feeling some type of way about management, leadership, ownership of education, or in the schools now, shall I say, in the schools okay. particularly. So basically, it was just on my heart because I'm thinking, I'm an educator, and now I'm not interested in the classroom anymore. Mm -hmm. I really want out, I don't want any parts of it. Mm -hmm. Not the traditional classroom, mm -hmm. meaning where the grades are and things like that, like core class teaching. Um, because there's so many things that are not real anymore. And I'm only, what, 11 years in. So imagine someone who's been in education for 20 years, 25 years on their way out. I know they are super happy to be leaving. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm super, super happy. I'm super happy. So I'm sure I'm not the only one. But what I'm feeling is that there are a lot of issues that are taking place with all of these new ed techs, which are not bad, but there's so many that innovation has become a word of getting more okay. rather than doing what's great for your school that's going to push your school to be better versus just let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. So there's so many things to do with the ed techs, with the STEMs, with the innovations, with all the blooms, the DOK, with all of the data, the feedback. There's so many things that we cannot focus on the learning because they're mm -hmm. taking precedence. Mm -hmm. So that is a major issue for me right now. So the realism is the part of all these things that teachers are expected to do, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we're not able to do because of all the other outside things that's influencing the classroom. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned not real anymore. Yes. Can you elaborate on not real? Yes, not okay. real. Not Basically, real. Basically, I feel like, so my, if I had any type of line or any type of like um, pitch phrase, it'll be the talkers are winning and the doers Ooh. are losing. Uh-oh, okay. I feel like all uh -oh. of this talk, 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 these people are just talking and talking and talking and conferences and this, and, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking, but what are you doing at your place? Like, what is happening in your building? Okay. What are you doing for your teachers? What are you doing for your students? Is it self-promotion, mm -hmm. which we all need because we all want to share practices, of right. course. But I'm like, what is it? that you are doing to influence and to improve the learning at your place. And it's really, and it's not just one person, it's just not one country, it's not one group of people, it just seems to be global. Mm -hmm. And I'm just really not feeling it as an educator. You know? Okay, so tell me what would you like to see? I would like to see less talk. Uh oh. And I want to see more doing, I want to see, hey, how about we go in and we say, you know what? This is not working, mm -hmm. but it's not working because it just sucks. It just may not be working for the people or the place where I am. So how about now we figure out how we can get this to work practically where okay. my teachers can actually see it through. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. I want more support for teachers, um, more um, clear objectives for parents. I feel like everyone is unclear of where they stand. All the boundaries are all meshed. Okay. Like teachers, this is your job. Administrators, this is your job. Mm -hmm. Parents, this is your job. Mm -hmm. Students, this is your job. I feel like if we put those in place and make them very clear, it will be easier for everyone. So yeah. do you feel this is a 
global or international problem that no, or this is a global global issue global. i have okay. people friends who've taught in africa who've taught in south america basically everywhere europe mm -hmm. um middle east um asia and it's the same thing everywhere um i, I don't know anyone yet in australia you know mm -hmm. i don't know what goes on there but i'm pretty sure it's happening everywhere so it's a global thing and i just feel like because there's so many so when i go back to now mm -hmm. when you're saying what's happening now I go back, I say this because I'm thinking, well, when I was growing up in school, of course, we didn't see all the sides of what teachers did, like lesson planning right, and all that things. Right. But I feel like I got a holistic education. I took math, English, science, mm -hmm. health, and social studies mm -hmm. every day That's for right. about 40 minutes. You I did. still got PE, art, music, strings, orchestra, band, all these things. Guidance counseling. Yeah. Guidance counseling. Yes. 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 All these things. <laughs> and I feel like I'm yeah. well-rounded. But yeah. these kids, we want to give them tech. We want to give them all this old extra stuff. But at the same time, I still feel like we know way more without all this technology and all of the ease of what they have access to. Mm -hmm. We didn't have it, but I still feel like we are so much more well-rounded. We can problem solve better. We can do all these things. So why is it that now with all this extra um, improvements in technology that the kids have now, why is it that we're still behind? Right. You know, right. Why, you know right. I don't understand right. the correlation between the two. So do you think that... You said it was a global. So yes. do you think it goes down more into like the policies of education or does it start at the school? Like where does it really um, begin? Um it could be policy, um, and it could be ownership. Ownership. Okay. It could be um school wide. It could be a great many things, who knows? Mm -hmm. But what I do know is that there is a problem in the classroom and the classroom is the center. Right. You know, so everything is pushed down okay. to the center and saying, Hey, you put it on the teacher, put it on the teacher, but the teacher is one entity in that classroom you know so it seems like all the responsibilities from the okay. parents from the students from the admin from the owners from the policy makers is all going to the teacher as if that teacher is that one to do it all and where yeah, is the support yeah we get yeah. a lot of I work to do yes. a lot. <laughs> a lot. We, a lot. I can't even live. I can't even breathe. Grading paper. Grading paper. Behavior. Absolutely. It's, it's a lot. So. It is a lot. It's yeah. a lot. Okay. So I want to thank you for being open mm -hmm. about this yes, and thank, thank you, you for addressing these concerns. Mm -hmm. So what are some possible strategies? I know you mm -hmm. mentioned that, you know, we need support, yeah. but you know, what are some exact, can you think of some exact strategies yes. that we could, you know, implement if, if you know, someone was watching today mm -hmm. and you know, what could they do now to support their staff or what, I, what, do you, what do you think teachers are looking for? I feel like teachers are looking for support and they're support. looking for something that's very clear. So I feel like if, when before school starts, mm -hmm. all parents need to come in. It's like, yes, why yes, am I in the classroom yes. and, and you're like still, yes, and and you're still like asking that. me yeah. to get a document? But this document should have been done from admissions. So you will take a lot off my plate if you will have admissions to do what they should do, right. or you already know what it is that you want them to do. So right. I shouldn't be. They shouldn't be bringing in forms to me that they should before they are able to enter the school. Okay, the, that's one. But for it to be such such a small thing. Mm -hmm. It's a lot on a teacher yes. to do those things yes. when it could be done already. Correct. That'll just so free them up. It, more organization. Um, also, so yeah, let me go back to speaking to the parents. Like, the parents' expectations should already be there. Like, I just realized, and I've been knowing this, but it just really hit me. Like, my job is not, because I'm quick to tell someone what my job is not. <laughs> so, my job is not what really. Is not. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> so, my job is not <laughs> to make your kids sit down that is not my job uh -huh. teachers have we have been so loving that we've taken on these types of responsibilities but no that's the parents job mm -hmm. to have their child trained behavior wise mm -hmm. to sit down when an adult is telling you to sit down with the purpose of school so if the admin is very clear about exactly what it is that they expect from, from the, the from the parents right. and their children then it will be a little bit more easier instead of parents trying to play the blame game. We're not playing the blame game. We should all be on Looking one accord. Together. Exactly. Right. And then another thing I can see is that the the what's it, what we should teach. Like, make sure you have someone in place to have exactly what should be taught. Like, like these coaches, the coaches need to be well-trained in what's happening because what's happening is that oh go we're, we're doing this we're learning this we're doing this we're doing that yes but there's so many things that i need full 
support. So that yeah. means that if every teacher yeah. needs a, a teaching assistant, then why not? Give them, a, yeah. Give them assistance. Yeah. If you claim that you're doing everything for your teachers and for your students to learn, then give them what they need. Yeah. Because clearly, we don't have what we need. And I think we've been expected so long to just spend our money to go buy things. That's not our job. Mm -hmm. Doctors, lawyers, all these other people who are praised in their professions, they have people to clerks to type mm -hmm. stuff people, nurses or triage people to do everything else before you even get to them. You know, you one, know, of, so. one of my issues um, lately as we're like, you know, uh, you know, we both teach science. Yes. Mm -hmm. So one of my issues for me and the support will be great is, mm -hmm. and I have to basically teach myself, <laughs> but is, you know, you're, we've been teaching years now mm -hmm. and then the mm -hmm. curriculum has changed. Yeah. Uh -huh. Some of the stuff that I learned back in college, <laughs> yes. even in high school, mm -hmm. I don't remember. Exactly. And so when I'm going and you've given me this expectation as a teacher mm -hmm. to meet these requirements, but then I don't even have training to teach the to kids and then I have to go back if I want to be effective, I'm going to have to train or teach myself mm -hmm. or review myself. Absolutely. That's a lot too, where I feel like if you can just give us the support you know, at least give us extra time to really review, a Absolutely. review period or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's called. Make up something. <laughs> but so we can actually really learn yeah, go our back craft. Mm -hmm. But the only time we have is our planning. Planning is for me. We have meetings. Yeah. Also, we got to take our work mm -hmm. home. Exactly. And so I feel like for me personally, just based on what you said, you know, when you have an instructional coach, mm -hmm. okay, can the instructional coach give me some support? Exactly. And not make me do everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, and that's yeah. another thing. Like, it's like, okay, I'm the instructional coach or, and not just to be on instructional coaches, but any of these coaches like we're here. It's, but it's always something else for the teacher to do, like yeah. you said, versus, hey, you pull me to the side, you come in, you're working with me, you come in, you're showing me. Exactly. You're doing yep. by example, the way that you want me to model for yeah. my students. Yeah. So that's a big thing. And it's like having these extra positions like those in schools, mm -hmm. it's really uh -huh. pivotal. And you really, really Which that took us down to? The data. You wanna, oh, <laughs> let's don't, get, started. don't get us started on data. I can't even because <laughs> most of the data is just to say we have data. Yeah. But it doesn't even have to be all fancy. It just needs to be relevant right. and reliable. Right. And so, yeah, I can't even get started on data. <laughs> data is another situation. Okay. But, so yeah. you mentioned mm -hmm. parental support, yes. how we can, schools can have support. Yes. First, or giving parental guidance, I guess. Yeah. And then, the you know, uh, having the correct support for the teachers, yes. such as instructional coaches mm -hmm. or, I mean, professional development, yeah. different mm -hmm. things like that. But the professional de development where we are developing, not just sitting pitching, there yeah, and not just <laughs> picking someone else's uh, curriculum or right. product, right? Which right. is not, which is, of course, I have my own curriculum that right. I eventually want to do. But I'm talking about giving me, if I'm going to do NGSS, then I need somebody who knows NGSS, NGSS. like the back Get of their the hand. NGSS. As specialists. Yes, and I need them you. next to me, guiding right. me, saying, hey, this is what it's saying. Oh, no, you're doing this standard. And, hey, you know, you can use these bloom verse. This bloom verse connects to this DOK level because you're doing this. This is what I need. Right. This is what I want. Right. I don't right. want anything that's else true. that's not dealing with what I need my kids to know right. in the classroom. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other support? You said parental uh guidance mm -hmm. what uh what we, sh what, we sh what we should teach mm -hmm. is there anything else that you yes i i the leaders itself um they need to go back in the classroom after two yeah. or three years in leadership planning yeah you need to do another you need to be like an intern you need to go back into the classroom for six months and you need to be a teacher refresher because you, you need a real refresh you need a crash <laughs> course all leaders even if i become a leader myself I need a crash course because what happens is that we forget. you forget. We definitely oh, forget. you forget. And then you you keep asking and you asking and you think it's fine, but it's not fine because there's so much on my plate That's true. right now. So if believers go back into the classroom and get that refresher, I think they understand a little bit more like, oh, wow, wait, I, I understand. I, now you're empathizing. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about design process. So how about we go back mm -hmm. to the classroom, let the leaders do the design process with teaching and I think that would really help. So that's that innovation, help. Yep. design process, with them um, getting a great development and get some realism because clearly I don't. Th they're not connected to the classroom at all. Mm -hmm. Well, I hate to say, one of my biggest issues. Mm -hmm. I do. I do have a, a pet peeve, mm -hmm. and one of my issues are um, well, is, is having a principal or a leader in place. Mm -hmm. There's not. They, they don't have enough experience. Yeah, absolutely. So for absolutely. me. 
you know, we've been teaching for years. Mm-hmm. Out, you know, we've been in the classroom for years. We have a hard time moving up into leadership. But then we have leaders who were only in the classroom yes. for like, like less than four years. <laughs> and now they're an admin and they're trying to tell me how to do my job. But I've been in the classroom for like 10 years. So it's like. I have a problem. Sorry, but I have a problem. Yeah, it's like. Let's be real. It's like, for me, the because I'm still making my transition to leadership. And I'm trying to figure out what part of leadership I want uh-huh. to do. Um, will I be a great leader? Yes, hands down. I know that. No problem. You are a leader, by the way. Thank you very you much. You are. You are but, definitely a leader. Um, and, and there's still a lot of things I'm learning because I know what leaders and leaders would not just on you, um, but you are the leaders. So clearly, you have to lead, <laughs> but uh, and you have to have followers. So you need to not lead them blindly. But what I'm saying is, I'm sure there's other aspects of leadership that we not always be, um, we're not always familiar with that mm-hmm. maybe they know that we don't know. Right. So I do understand that aspect, but. When you've only been in the classroom so many years and then you're trying to guide someone else, that's a problem yeah. because you're going to run into that, those people. Not talking about these new millennials who think they know everything. Mm-hmm. They one, two year, three teachers that think they know everything. Not those. I'm talking about these people who you put yourself in that position, which means that you know what you what that position is. You know what that position entails. So I'm thinking if you put yourself there, you want to be there so bad, then you need to be ready to take charge That's true. and lead yes. your yes. teachers, you know, to, to yes. be better. Yeah. Otherwise, move. Yeah. Go somewhere else. And I feel like because a lot of people who want the name, they're happy in being in that position because it's that title. Mm-hmm. But you're not, you can't do well with what that job entails. You can't see it through. You just like the name. That's true. You know, and I'm like, listen, you don't have to be a principal. You don't have to be assistant principal. You don't have to be a, a learning coach. You don't have to be a advisor. You don't have to be any of those things if that's not. Just be a researcher. Yeah. If, if, you know, if, if and, I, and I, I actually ask myself, I'm like, you know, sometimes I ask myself, did they forget where they came from? I think so. I think and so. And do you, too? Mm-hmm. And see, that goes back to you saying they need to go back. Go back to Into school. the classroom because, you know, sometimes I think they really do forget. I'm like, you, you've you been here. Maybe you didn't like Maybe. it enough. Mm-hmm. Maybe the good part, the, the strength in us yeah. is that we were able to stay. Yeah. And sorry, but maybe you weren't strong enough to stay. Exactly. And so you moved out. But my question is, you know... Why? What was your why in becoming an education anyway? And I think what happens is a lot of, you know, leaders, you know, forget their why. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they go Absolutely. into the, this position and they, I know they got to move the school and they want to keep name. the, yeah, and I'm like, you got to remember your why. If yeah. you remember your, and there are a lot of principles that do. Yeah, absolutely. But some forget their why. And so I feel like, but you're, you're covering it. They don't, they like, oh, I'm just out here doing my job. I'm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm making more money. Yeah, exactly. So it's the more money. It's the money. It's the clout. And it's the name. And a lot of people want that. Sometimes. You say clout? Yes, clout. Doing it for the clout. <laughs> yes, doing it for the clout. <laughs> so not the clout. The clout. C L O U T. So it's like. Um, oh, I spelled that right. Yeah, you spelled it right. Okay. So yeah, it's not. It's not. Um, yeah. So it's not like they're all terrible. No, no, no. I love. I know a lot of great leaders, but there are some who can't lead. You know. Mm-hmm. And there's, so. yeah, there's some who can't lead and there's some who can lead. It's just that about finding the balance. What's, what type of leader are you? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So when, if I become a leader, I kind of know the type of leader I am. Mm-hmm. So that means that I know how to build those who can lead and who cannot lead. Or I know what my strengths and my weaknesses are. Mm-hmm. So that means that I can see weaknesses that I have and they may be strengths for someone else. And mm-hmm. I'm willing to, you know, reach out to do that. But it's it's just a I don't know it's just something that really bothers me and I'm it's making me want to leave the classroom. Oh no! It is making me want to leave the classroom and then but, education. But oh no! Did you say education too? Um, uh, I may try to tip out. I don't know. It depends. Well, I need a I need a break. But before you say that, I yes. do want to say that. You know, you have focused on uh, STEAM and STEM, yeah. mm-hmm. and you know, I know you don't want to say much about it, but yeah. I know you have you know, done some really great projects mm-hmm. behind the scenes. And I just want to say thank you mm-hmm. for your work in education and everything that you've been doing, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I'm excited to see what things are about to, to happen for you, mm-hmm. you know, so stay tuned for what she's about to do. She'll be back. She has, be some, back. She has some things brewing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do, I do want to say thank you for, mm-hmm. you know, your service in education and being a big value, um, in your, in the States mm-hmm. and here in the UAE. Um, we appreciate you. Yes. So thank you. Thank you so much. And um, so stay tuned. Do you want to give just a little bit to, about information about what um, you're working on behind the scenes? Okay. So behind the scenes, just a little bit. Um, this is a leader I'm in her. I'm having my company called Stimics. 
S T E M M I X. Um, it's coming. It's a STEM project based curriculum. And I'm hoping to get put out by this time next year. So look for it. Yes, congratulations. Yes, thank you. That's a, that's a lot of thinking behind the scenes. Yes, a lot of which is why. And planning and, yeah. Yes, yes. B trying to build a business from the ground up. And I don't know anything is a lot, so I'm taking my time. And yes. that is the leader in yes. you. So, thank you. So, so thank you. So Jackie, I want to say thank you for coming on. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being real in education. Mm -hmm. um, so guys, if you have any comments about our uh, topic today, feel free to yep. respond feel back. Free. We will respond back to you. And maybe from your comments, we will do yep. another episode. This is Everything Education. Bye.